And I want you to come on a story with me for a moment. You know, dancing is not about dancing. You come to a dance studio, you come to do what? Maybe it's to learn to dance, but is it really? Of course, we want to learn the technique and the foundations. We need to understand how to move our feet and to be in harmony with the music because when we start any skill, we suck at it. We're not good, right? Like we, we are not good when we first learn to play a piano or to paint or even to cook. There are certain fundamentals we have to get. Dancing is no different. However, is that really the thing that we're there for? And the answer is no. So I always tell my students, you are here for life. And they might laugh and chuckle a little bit. I'm like, no, I'm serious. Like dancing saved me. I was hanging around the wrong people. I was hanging around people that used to steal, that used to deal drugs, that used to do all sorts of naughty, naughty things. So I ended up in jail. It's like, nah, you. I was like, man, if you, if I told you the truth about my youth, I don't think you'd believe me, right? But dancing saved me and maybe it saved you too because it gave me something far more than just steps. It gave me something far more than just a goal to pursue, which of course is important. We must have an aim. But I wanna share my philosophy on dancing. And here's what happens with most people. Stay with me, because this is really, really important. Take a moment for yourself to think about it like this. Faith in the familiar sets the trap. If you just keep doing what you do, you are going to get the same results. Now, I'm not gonna beat on that bush today, but I want you to understand that we're in a, a, a double-edged sword here. We have to master our basics on the one hand. We have to know what we're doing to dance well, except where does our growth come from? Where does like the best level of your dancing come from? Where does the best growth and opportunity present itself? It's in the unknown out here. Think about it like this for a moment. The hero's journey is one of the most widely accepted and told stories that you may not even be aware about. It's a framework for how we tell stories. It's a framework for basically most movies. In fact, there's only about seven basic plot structures when you break it down that most movies, plays and theater fall into. And books, of course, are part of that. Now, what the hero's journey represents is exactly what we're doing. Now, personally, I don't believe life is a journey because that means we have a destination, like a final arriving point. And that's why when you look at dancing, you can't be like, oh, it's a journey, it's a journey. It's like, well, not really, because that means if it's a journey, your point of dancing is to go from here to that corner in the room, and then to go from that corner to that corner. It's like, that's not the point of dancing, right? Dancing is the art, it's that expression, it's that movement. It's being with the music, it's being one in that moment. That isn't esoteric, that's what dancing is. If it was to just go from A to B, you'd, you know, what the hell's the point of that, right? Like, you know, there's much easier ways to go from A to B. But the point is, is that we're on this quest. Now, if you think about the Lord of the Rings, you think about Star Wars, the reason those things land is because we see ourselves as that person. We see ourselves in the hero. Now, here's the thing, most heroes are reluctant. They don't want to do it, right? They're all they're the underdog, like in Rocky. Right? He's like, so you, you get a call, what ends up happening? And this is what I truly believe happens with most people in dancing, particularly those who follow it, you know, to, to not, they don't, not a professional or a world level, although yes, that's the ultimate sort of, you know, Lord of the Rings type style, but most people have a personal quest, right? And so they might think, well, I'm going to the studio to learn to dance so I can get fitter. It's like, are you really? There's something deeper than that. And this is why dancing so profound and so hard to explain <laughs> why it feels so good. But keep coming with me because this is something that'll resonate with you. Every movie that follows this quest is a representation of our own life. And Joseph Campbell did a lot of study on this, but for thousands of years, it's how we've told stories from the beginning to the end. We've said, there's a hero, you. You start in a boring city. You're bored out of your mind. You don't have any skills. You're probably hating life, right? Nothing exciting ever happens. And then what happens? you get a call to adventure. What ends up occurring is that there's something inside the, the hero that just wants more out of life. There's gotta be something there. It's like, your, it's like the intrinsic nature is saying, do more with yourself, be more, grow more. Don't waste what you have. But when the challenge comes, to go out, let's say the Hobbit in Lord of the Rings. He's in the Shire, it's a beautiful Shire, but it's boring. Everyone knows each other. Faith and in the familiar brings with it that boredom. Knowing what you're doing every time in the dance studio brings that boredom. Routine brings boredom, right? So the point is, 
there's something missing. Now he gets a call, but he refuses it. Why? Because you don't think you're good enough. No hero journey story that we relate to, the hero's like, yeah, I got this. It does happen, like in the Guardians of the Galaxy, for example, he's the sort of egotistical hero, but this type of hero we fall in love with because he has redeeming qualities. And what you really find is he's putting on a false sense of bravado. He's pretending he's this overconfident guy, but deep down we know in his backstory, he's got some demons or he's got something holding him in place or he's got some tragedy in the background that has made him have this false bravado on. You know, and we, we fall in love with characters like that, very attractive, right? But when we looked at the reluctant hero, right? That's us in dancing. Most people are the reluctant hero, right? And they, of course, we get the other type, the real overconfident guys. Um, but we find that that reluctant hero is the one that we gravitate towards the most. Why? Because it's like, here is the challenge for you to be a better person, to be everything you can be and to unleash your potential upon the world and to bring forth what is within you, your blessings, your, your divinity, your God-given awesomeness, whatever that power is you want to call it, I just call it life in this stage, but you refuse it, you say no, and this happens all the time. Hobbit does it, says no, can't do it Gandalf, I'm not up for that. Who am I? I'm a little hobbit, look at my feet, I can't do that trip. I've got too much hair on my toes, I'll trip on weeds. <laughs> the point is, is that something rises within him to greet the challenge anyway, despite his inadequacies. Welcome to dancing. Nobody is born a dancer. We're born, we learn to dance, but we're not really born to dance in the sense of like you are born, that's all you will do with your life. We build ourselves out of this, right? Now, here's what happens. When you say, yes, I'm going for that next level. I am going to challenge myself. I'm doing competition, baby. I'm doing medals. I'm doing something that's gonna like <sighs> scare my pants off. You have now accepted the challenge even though you refuse the call. Now in this moment, you go on your quest. Now in the quest, what happens? You meet enemies, you get challenges, you have to kill. Often there's like three or four points before you get to where you're trying to get that you almost die. Now here's what happens to us metaphorically. We actually die and reborn. The hero dies and gets reborn throughout this all the time. So it's like as each stage comes and you know, you, when Frodo leaves the Shire, they go through the fields, what ends up happening? You get those Night Riders, man, they're crazy scary. And then what happens with the Night Riders? Well, they, oh, we just miss him. Whew, very tense moment in the film. But if you look at that, he's just grown from facing that fear, even though he was scared to death of it. Okay, now he's equipped for the next challenge. You cannot get to that next level unless you are prepared to face that first challenge, no matter how you actually feel about it. Then you'll recognize there's something within you that can overcome it. Now that is your personal power right there. Now each one of those op is an opportunity for growth. This is why we don't want just the faith in what we know, the faith in what is familiar in our lives. It is the thing that is going to hold you in place and give you the most frustration, the anxiety and stress. But you think you want the certainty, but you also need the uncertainty as well. You need to have no idea what the hell is gonna happen if you step out there in the unknown. Welcome to dance. You think you're just turning up for a cha-cha lesson, right? Not at all, that's what's going on inside. And then all of a sudden, it's like, man, I'm a competition dancer. It's like, you don't start out in life getting born put on a dance floor, right? Like, you know, that's not what happens. You birth yourself into that position. This happens in work, this happens everywhere, but this quest continues. What ends up occurring is there's always a final challenge, right? As this journey goes, you approach the cave. Now the cave could have this dragon in there. This is a classic tale, right? Dragon sitting on top of the pot of gold. You want the gold. The gold is not for the riches right? Putting the ring in the fire is not for the riches. It's, it is an ex a metaphoric example of you not only attaining and achieving a purpose and a goal, but the growth. It's called the elixir. Now this elixir is the knowledge. This elixir is the secrets. This elixir is the unknown world. Christopher Columbus did this, right? He traveled the world, regardless of what you think about him ethically, traveled the world, went to the Bra Brasilias, the Americas, and discovered those unknown regions and brought it back so we could know about it, right? Well, this is what happens in these films and in these quests and in your life is what's happening to you right now. Now, this elixir is the new wisdom, the new knowledge, the new way of doing things. 
and then you travel back. Now, when you come back, you often still meet adversity on the way back, but the journey is generally easier. It depends on the story you're going through. But as that comes back, the ordeal's been achieved, you've killed the dragon, you've got the pot of gold, you've got your elixir, and you are resurrected a new person. You're not the same. This is where most people get so trapped mentally. You are a community of individuals unto yourself. The person you are today is not who you'll be tomorrow. And that person will not be the same in a year from now. You are not the same person you were yesterday and you weren't 10 years ago. Why? Now, you might think, but hold on, I know I'm different to what I was 10 years ago, but that's because my hormones have changed, I've grown, my brain's changed, all of these things have happened to me, I'm older, yeah, but you know you're not the same person you were five or 10 years ago. Your results might reflect that you are, you might be in the same financial position, debt, bad relationships, that's a whole different ball game. The point is, you know you're not the same. But day, if I say you're a different person tomorrow, you have a hard, might have a hard time believing that. Think, that that's not true. I, I, no, I don't believe that. Well, then why were you different 10 years ago, but not you won't be different tomorrow? It's because the growth happens so slowly, right? This quest is continually happening. You must give death to who you think you are and who you think you were and give rise to everything that is within you, your potential, your power, and your purpose. All of those things are in there. Now, you don't hit them. This is why life is not a journey because you don't hit those points. So far as I know it, nobody ever has maximized their potential. Because if you maximize that, you've hit a top. You've hit, that's it, I can't do anymore. I'm now the best ever of all time because I physically cannot ever be any better. It doesn't happen, right? That's why there's no perfection in dancing and dancing is not a journey. Life is not a journey because you're continually evolving. Death, rebirth, death, rebirth. Now we love these stories, right? Like just take that model of Lord of the Rings, come back to the Shire, Frodo knows he's not, he's not the same, he looks around him, he's having beers with everyone, everyone's like boring, doing the same shit, drinking too much, same jokes. Now they make fun of him. Why? Because unconsciously they recognize he is not the same anymore. He's not like them. People don't like that. People get scared of what they don't know. In a thing that we all do, I do this. The minute you face something you don't know, you reject it. You, you have to get rid of that bias as quick as you can, and try to be as open as possible. But we often criticize the things we do not understand. This is why when you first start dancing, it's so scary because you don't understand what the hell is happening. You think you're learning steps. You're actually going through this quest. Now, as you keep going through this quest, what is happening? You're rebuilding, you're rebirthing, you're giving rise to the new you. It's exactly the phoenix rising from the ashes, but happening virtually every day. But you have moments where these quantum leaps occur, where you are so different, you cannot go back to the old you. Could you imagine me with like spiky hair, baggy pants, baggy t-shirt, doing skateboard competitions, the lead singer of a heavy metal band, and a snowboard captain, right? And that's just all the, the fun stuff on the surface. There was a lot going on behind the scenes. I used to organize parties and bring DJs around. We had, like we had a crazy time when I was a teenager. I was not a normal kid. But could you imagine that? Because look at me now, right? But I, I could never go back there. I'm different. Now I'm a dad, I've rebirthed. I'm different. And you must give the past its due, grieve it, feel it, let it go. It's happened. Be grateful for it. Find the lessons within that, but do not cling on to it and wish it was still around because that is fundamentally facing life the wrong way. You are a hero. You might be reluctant. You might be an underdog facing overwhelming adversity because of a disability or something that is mentally uh, upstairs, just not firing quite well. Or you might have situations and financial circumstances just so hard that you wish you had a better leg up. Take heed in the beautiful advice that there's something within you that is so great and so beautiful that it will overcome. But it cannot happen by law without you facing those things that you do not know the outcome of. You must understand that uncertainty is exactly the thing that we must pursue. This is such a good message for this time where the world is so uncertain. I remind myself of this. Now, it's one of the reasons why we make our home so beautiful, or maybe you don't make it beautiful. So get your stuff together, right? Get your house in order, take care of your finances, get the basics in your life right, get the basics in your dancing right. If you don't get those right, you do not qualify for the next level, you just can't. But it's the reason why we shape our environment the way we do, because it gives us certainty. 
we know we have something we can go to. If you don't have a home, you're gonna feel really uncertain. If you don't have a job, you can feel really uncertain, right? But the certainty is within. It's within the hero knowing that this is my challenge. I can overcome. There's something in me that allows me to be bigger than the circumstance I'm currently facing. When you slay that dragon, what ends up, what ends up happening? Boom, new you is born and you are stronger, you have more wisdom and it's easier to overcome the same challenge the next time. In fact, it doesn't become a challenge anymore, it's easy. Right, and that's why we look at someone who's like a professional dancer, you go, my God, you look, man, you look so effortless. It's like, yes, I've slain many dragons to dance that well. You must start the slaying quest. Get out that sword and start cutting down tails, baby. The point is this, taking those quantum leaps happen, but you've got to qualify for them. When you think you're coming for dancing, you're really developing yourself. You're developing yourself into a greater person, into a better version of you. Because imagine, let's take a dualistic approach. Imagine there's a higher side and a lower side to you, right? So the lower nature, which you could call your immoral self if you want, or it doesn't have to be immoral, but it's just there's a dark side to all of us, there's a light side, right? There's a high and a low side. There's the, I'm gonna help the old lady across the road today. Then there's the F the old lady, I'm not going, I, screw this, you know, like get your own shopping in your car, right? There's two sides all the time in opposition and they're basically battling for control constantly, right? Now, you get to pick which one of those wins and you can do it by facing these uncertain things because that strengthens the higher nature within you. It strengthens you to have resolve. It strengthens you to have consistency and persistence. And when you don't feel like it, it's exactly the moment you need to do it. I cannot share, you think I just turn up and do these things because like, I don't get dressed and I come because I just feel like doing it? No, like, no, not at all. My lower nature is pulling me the other way but I'm on a quest. I wanna serve. I wanna bring my skills and talents into the world the best that I can. I want that for you. And it doesn't just happen. It's shaped, it is carved out and is literally forged from the danger you face and the adversity that you are going through. I don't care what situation you're in, you have way more going for you than what you're currently facing. But you have to step up and rise into that challenge and not shrink from it. When I talk, talk to the dance at home clients, the VIP students that have the Board Mastery Academy, any, any of my clients that come meet me, where, however I see them across this beautiful world of ours, they are all are on a quest. But the ones that quit that quest, they shrink and go back to the Shire, they never experience the growth that I'm talking about. And I don't want that for you. I want you to realize that you can go from A to D, D to M, M to Z. But your journey in length of time is gonna be extremely different, but it does follow that type of thing. And it's one of the reasons why we resonate so much with this type of story and Disney's nailed it. If you ever wonder why Disney movies are like all the same, it's because that formula, it's not because it just sells the best, it resonates the best. Because you see yourself as that character. Now, which one are you? Are you the underdog? Everything's against you, you're Rocky, right? Are you uh, out of the Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Are you Wolverine? Like which one? Like pick a hero, but th that's you. It's always symbolic of who you are. You have greatness within you. You have something you can do that's better than anyone else. But with dancing, remember, it, you might just think, I'm gonna be learning my steps today. I'm gonna be mastering my technique in a program like Dance at Home or on my YouTube channel or anywhere with your coach around the world. But remember what you're really doing is you're battling that lower side of yourself that doesn't wanna do it and wants to stay in the familiar where it's a dangerous, poisonous, and envious part to live. And what you are doing is building out of that into the unknown through these challenges, medals, pro-am, competition, hell, just even doing more lessons might be it for you. Whatever that threshold is, face it, conquer it, grow, and watch the rewards flow. And the greatest reward of all will not be financial. It'll be the person that you become that no one can take away from you.